This QGIS tutorial is for LECOS or Landscape Ecology Statistics Tool plugin. To install the plugin, go up to Plugins, go to Manage and Install Plugins, and then search for LECOS, L E C O S, and click it. This tool will calculate a lot of different metrics that are based on frag stats. These metrics are common landscape ecology tools that are useful to look at the changes of habitat types across a landscape. And in the case of mangroves, where more fragmentation has occurred as a result of aquaculture or other anthropogenic effects. So click Install Plugin. And when it's installed, click Close. Now we'll add some data to look at. I have test data from an area in Ecuador where we measured the extent of mangroves. So I'll add this file from 1977. The black are areas of mangroves, and that's class one. The gray are areas of aquaculture, which is class three. And then the white is uh, areas of the estuary. So if we go to web and go to your open layers plugin, go down to Google, and then go to the Google hybrid, and we can see the satellite image of this landscape. Move the Google image below the habitat layer. Right click on the habitat layer and go to properties and then go to transparency and turn the global transparency down to about 50% so we can see through our habitat layer. Uh, so you can see the estuary underneath that layer. Um, it looks a little bit different because the habitat is 1977 and this satellite image is much more recent. Uh, but you can see where the river is and the mangrove areas and then you can also see some of the aquaculture ponds. So I'll just add the layer, the landscape from 2011 so that we can see those aquaculture layers better. Just turning down the transparency of that one too. And turn off 1977 and you can see that it matches up a little bit better the where the river is flowing um, and our class seven or the estuary class. And then if we look down here a little bit, you can see those aquaculture ponds pretty clearly and that they match up pretty well with the 2011 habitat layer. And now we don't need the Google Hybrid anymore, so right click and go to remove. Click OK. And then just right click and zoom to layer on 1977. And then we'll turn the transparency back up so we can see the categories a little better. Right click, go to properties, turn the global transparency down to zero. And now we'll begin using Lycos. So go up to raster and go to landscape ecology. And then landscape statistics, change your land cover grid to the 1977 layer. Uh, no data is 255 and the cell size is 1 and you can make sure that those are the right parameters by right clicking the habitat layer and then going to the metadata and scroll down to properties and scroll all the way to the bottom or almost and under layer spatial reference system you'll see that the units are meters. And then if you scroll up a bit, the no data value is 255. And uh, the pixel size or the cell size is one. Click OK. And now we'll go back to Lycos. And then under Calculate Metric, it will give you a nice description of what the metric is that you're calculating. Uh, how it's calculated and a little bit about what it will be and you can see it has about 20 different metrics that it will calculate. I'll go through what a lot of them are after we run the tool. In this tab on the tool 
called calculate metric. You can calculate one metric at a time for each class in your habitat layer. So I'm going to start with number of patches, which is one of the more simple metrics. It will give you the number of patches of each habitat class. So I'm just going to run it with direct value output and I want the land cover grid to be the 1977 one and then click OK. These metrics take a little bit of time to calculate and sometimes it looks like the tool is not doing anything but then it spits out your results. So class 1 is the mangroves, class 3 is the aquaculture area, and class 7 is the estuary and it's telling you how many distinct patches of each class there are. One of the downsides of this, when you don't save it as a CSV, is that you, you can't make the tool go away, so you can't actually see the map underneath. Uh, so I would recommend saving all of your outputs as CSVs when you calculate the tools. So it was saying that there were about eight uh, patches of mangroves, and if you count them out, you can see that that's essentially true. So open up the tool again, and this time we'll select multiple metrics to run. My computer couldn't run all of them at once, so I'm going to do half and half. So I'll select the first eight from land cover down to smallest patch area. Then click the arrow pointing to the right and that will add those metrics to the job list. Make sure the land cover grid is correct and we're going to save the result this time into a folder where you, you'll be able to find it. Mine's called Mangroves QGIS. And I'll just name it something obvious, 1977 patch sats 1. And then click Save. And click OK. This will take a significant amount of time to run. So we'll leave it and come back to it. When it's done, the window will simply close and your CSV will be in the folder where you told it to go and you can add it into your workspace and right click it and go to attribute table to see the results. Now I'll just go through what each one of these means. Uh, the classes are the same classes that we've been looking at, mangrove, aquaculture, and estuary. Land cover is the total area that is covered by each class. So for this landscape, the aquaculture covers the least, and then mangroves, and then the estuary. And you can see that by landscape proportion, which is the proportion of area that each of those classes takes up in the total landscape. Edge length is the total length of all of the edges of the patch. So it's like the perimeter of all of the patches of each class. Edge density is the edge length divided by the land cover or the total area of the class of the landscape. And edges can be really important in ecology. Greater edge density can mean that the habitat is more fragmented and that can mean that species that need large patches of habitat may not be able to survive once the habitat gets cut up. We've already gone through the number of patches. It's the number of discrete patches of each class. And you can see that there were five for the aquaculture layer. And if you count them, there are in fact five of those patches visible. Patch density is the total area of each of the categories divided by the number of patches. So it's a metric to show how dense the patches are within the landscape. Greatest patch area is what it sounds like, the area of the largest patch, and smallest patch area is the area of the smallest patch in each class. 
And the smallest patch area that we've calculated is one, so that means there is a patch of mangrove that is one cell big. So that's the first half of the metrics you can calculate with LECOS. I will go over the second half in part two of this series.